Just how important do you think it is that praises to Jesus are being sung in the Capitol? Steve Emerson is a professional singer. He lives in California, but regularly travels to Washington, D.C. to minister to members of Congress. There's a spiritual battle that's going on, and the real battle is not a political battle. It's a spiritual battle. And it's not about the party of the elephant, and it's not about the party of the donkey. It's about the lamb. It's the opposite of politics, power or prestige. It's about a simple message, and whether we believe it's due. Steve Emerson is our guest on this episode of GPS, God, People, Stories. I'm Jim Kirkland. And I'm Phil Fleischman. Steve will be in Washington for the inauguration of President-elect Trump, but he won't be singing at any official inauguration events. He will, however, be singing at a prayer gathering before the inauguration. GPS, God, People, Stories. Steve Emerson, sometimes referred to as America's tenor, You may not recognize Steve's name, but you may very well recognize the voice. I've sung on over 175 feature films uh, on the scores of these films, things like Aladdin, Beauty and the Beast, Pocahontas, Hunt for Red October, Home Alone, One and Two, Sister Act, Men in Black, Bridge of Spies, La La Land, just did Star Wars. So I've sung for movies and commercials and television shows. Steve has also sung at several Billy Graham crusades, and he's got a full schedule of concerts throughout the year. He's the son of a pastor, and he gave his life to Christ when he was 17. Today, Steve and his wife, Christine, live in the Los Angeles area, not far from their two adult children. Part of Steve's busy travel schedule is a twice a month trip to Washington, D.C. During his visits, he helps lead a weekly Wednesday night worship service called the Jefferson Gathering in the basement of the Capitol building. The first night of doing the Jefferson Gathering, which is the first weekly worship service in the Capitol in 144 years, started on July 30th of 2014. The Jefferson Gathering wasn't Steve's idea. It was organized by two pastors, Dan Cummins and Jim Garlow. The three men believe it's important for Christians in Congress to come together. Here's a problem, though. Some of those members don't always know who their fellow believers are. So one of the things we've been able to accomplish is to help identify who are the people that claim the name of Jesus. That has helped. We have given them a forum in the Capitol to come and worship. But making it to that Wednesday night worship service can be a challenge because members of Congress are inundated with other invitations. There are events, dinners, banquets, speaking opportunities, and it is not uncommon for a member of Congress to try to make two, three, four, five of these in an evening. They'll pop in and do their thing and move on. We have members of Congress that tell their scheduler Wednesday night, I'm going to church. And so I feel that we are an encouragement to them. Encouragement? Because being a member of Congress is a demanding job. And actually, Steve says, for many Christian lawmakers, it's more than a job. Many of the believers who are in Congress see that as a mission field. They re- they, they're they called there. This is a very hard life in D.C. Your days there are from like 7 a.m. in the morning, they'll sometimes be voting on pieces of legislation until 10, 11. I've been there when they've been voting until 1 a.m. in the morning. So it's a very hard time there on the Hill. And then when they go home, their times home are not their own because they need to see constituents and so forth. So I really believe that our presence doing the Jefferson Gathering is a, is a time of encouragement for them, a time uh, to uplift them. It is my prayer to be a servant set apart To always trust Him and obey Those Wednesday night services aren't the only way Steve encourages members of Congress. He meets with them, prays for them, and writes to them. 
as I'm traveling, I write personal notes to members of Congress. Right now, I have roughly about 120 members of Congress, both in the House and the Senate, on my list. So as I'm flying, I'm writing notes to them, just saying, I'm praying for you today. Or this past week, I wrote notes uh, just saying, I'm praying for this time of transition. And so I do those. Actually, there are so many, I can't do it on the flight any longer. From Los Angeles to D.C. is a five-hour flight. So I have to do some of these before I leave home to get them all done. On those two Wednesdays a month that Steve's in D.C., he packs his day with visits to lawmakers' offices. I was in the office of a congressman a few months back, and he closed the door and began just to pour out his heart Mm. and tell me how lonely he is, how lonely life is on the Hill. Mm. What many people don't know is many congressmen live and sleep in their office to own a place or to rent a, rent a place in D.C. is very, very expensive. Occasionally, Steve's ministry takes the form of a challenge, a loving challenge, but a challenge. He remembers talking to a member of Congress whose votes weren't in keeping with the biblical values that Steve knew the lawmaker had grown up with. So I said, someday I'd love to talk to you about how your faith intersects your votes. And they looked at their watch as if to say, my time was up. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, they said, yes, we should do that sometime. And so that that was a very poignant thing to uh, kind of an experience for me. That kind of encounter isn't as common as ones like these. I was walking into an office of a congressman from Texas, and as I walked in, he said, you know, walk with me. And I was walking down the hall praying for him, and that's when he shared that his uh, chief of staff was on life support. Even this past week, I'm walking down the hall, and this congressman, uh, I, I wave at him. He walks over. He said, you will never know how much your notes mean to me. He goes, I've got your notes in my office that you're praying for me. So uh, these are just powerful days in, in D.C. Some of Steve's ministry is very impromptu, like this meeting he had outside of his hotel one evening. I just gotten in, and I look across the street, and I see a congressman. So I cross the street, greet him at the intersection, and I said, Sir, how are you doing? He goes, I'm fine. He goes, I just got back from home. My wife had cancer, uh, surgery for cancer this past week. And just to stand and pray with him on the street corner, to realize here are men and women that are leaving their homes, leaving their families, some who have just had surgery to serve our nation. It's humbling to be able to be with these men and women and try to encourage them. These are men and women, says Steve, who are engaged in something much bigger than politics. There's a spiritual battle that's going on. and, And the real battle is not a political battle. It's a spiritual battle. It's the opposite of politics, power or prestige. It's about a simple message and whether we believe. And it's not about the party of the elephant, and it's not about the party of the donkey. It's about the lamb. It's still the The Lamb is Jesus Christ, and He loves people of every political persuasion. He died for all of us so that each one of us can live forever in heaven with God if we'll accept His offer of forgiveness. You can learn more about that at this website, findpeacewithgod.net. That's findpeacewithgod.net. That website is also helpful if you are a believer in Jesus Christ and you just have questions or want to grow deeper in your faith. That address again, findpeacewithgod.net. Steve Amerson has a suggestion for how you can minister to your representatives in Washington. That's coming up in just a minute. You're listening to GPS, God, People, Stories, a podcast production of the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association. Those who have the greatest power always need the greatest divine guidance. Billy Graham, preaching at a church service attended by President Lyndon Johnson on the day of his inauguration, January 20th, 1965. No government rules except by the will of God. In the midst of the bloody civil war, 
Abraham Lincoln read his Bible regularly. He memorized passages from its pages. He used the Word of God to help him make decisions and solve problems. In matters of right and wrong, the Bible was Lincoln's final court of appeal. The overwhelming problems of his day drove him to the Scriptures and to his knees in prayer. And out of this humble dependence upon God came the preservation of the Union. History always throbs with crisis. But the gospel is that God is for man and that in the greatest crisis this world has ever known, when Jesus Christ went to the cross, God transformed that tragedy into triumph and wrought redemption for those who trust in Him. If you'd like to hear the rest of that message, go to BillyGrahamRadio.org and click on Billy Graham Audio Archives. We've got more than 1,600 of Mr. Graham's messages available there. The address again is BillyGrahamRadio.org. Now back to the hosts of GPS, Phil Fleischman and Jim Kirkland. Franklin Graham will be reading a Bible passage at the inauguration of President-elect Donald Trump. He says it's a responsibility he takes very seriously. And Franklin's asking Christians to be praying for our new president and for the entire nation. That's very much in keeping with the ministry of our guest on this episode of GPS, Steve Amerson. I would challenge people to write their their representatives just a note just saying, I'm praying for you today. If we covered uh, the House and the Senate with, with notes of encouragement and prayer like that, there's no telling what might happen. So I would encourage people to do that. Great word of encouragement. So important, those prayers. A big thank you to Steve Amerson for being our guest on this episode of GPS and for allowing us to use some of his music. And a big thank you to you for listening. If you enjoyed GPS, would you do us a favor and tell your friends about us? You can find us at BillyGrahamRadio.org, on the Billy Graham app for your smartphone, and on Facebook, where all these messages are very shareable. I'm Jim Kirkland. And I'm Phil Fleischman. GPS is an outreach of the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association. Always good news. There's so much to be thankful.